Good day, everyone, and welcome to uh, to our morning session here in uh, here in Cordoba. So we have uh, a few uh, um, interesting and exciting presentations from uh, from uh, Evan and Angelos and Astrid, and finally uh, Raklav on some popular projects. Our first presentation. Our first presentation is from Evan Rule, and he will speak to the state of GDAO and uh, he will present the latest updates on the GDAO community, as well as new features, drivers, tools to uh, the new versions. Evan is the chair of the GDAO project steering committee. He's the manager of Spatialist, uh, which is a consultancy specialized in free and open source uh, geospatial software development. And he's obviously very familiar with uh, GDAO, Proj, Map Server, QS, and QGIS, and so on. So. Without further ado, I'll uh, move it over to Evan. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so welcome, welcome everybody. My name is uh, is Evan Ru. Um, I'm an independent free and open source software developer, uh, mostly focused on the GDAL map server proj, libgtf and Q uh, um, I'm sorry. I I have an issue with the sound going back to me. Oh, you might have to mute uh, your, uh, your your venueless uh, connection. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I have an issue with the Just mute the tab, I think. Back to me. Uh, yeah. You might have to mute uh, your venueless uh, your venueless. Uh, yeah, yeah, let me, ah. Sorry for that. Okay, uh, it's better. Uh, okay, so so I will give a, a quick uh, a quick update of uh, what happened uh, in the GDAL project during the, the last two years with a three dot one, and I will also talk a bit about the future direction. So what's what's GDAL in, in just one slide? So first. GDAL stands for the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library. Um, this is uh, the black box you use often without realizing it if you want to read or write geospatial formats in most C++ open source or closed source uh, GIS software. Um, as of today, it handles more than 250 different formats. And as a trend of recent years, it also handles network protocol and services. Uh, it is uh, delivered with an application program interface for C, C++, and other languages, such as Python, Java, uh, C Sharp. It comes with command line utilities uh, to inspect file contents, perform file uh, format conversion, image reprojection, rasterization, vectorization, and many other operations. It uses an MIT X uh, open source uh, license, which is uh, super permissive. And we release a version of each uh, with new feature every six months and uh, buff fix releases every two months. So given that the last date of GDAL talk was two years ago, I've now three releases to, to sum up. So in, in 3.1, we added a, a new uh, dedicated driver to generate cloud optimized uh, DOT files. Um, so typically, you know, just have to uh, to use a single uh, GDAL translate evocation. There have been also a number of improvements in the internal layout of uh, COG files. And uh, the DOT reader has been uh, enhanced to reduce the number of HTTP GET request needed, in particular, if you use a JPEG compression with this binary transparency mask. If you're curious about the details of uh, cloud-optimized formats, such as a COG, uh, you can uh, you can uh, see the, a, later, a later talk about that uh, today, uh, given by uh, Pierman Calbert. 
Um, a major work uh, in this fashion was also the addition of a new API uh, to uh, read and write uh, data sets uh, that contain multidimensional arrays. Uh, so by multidimensional, we mean something more than 2D, such as uh, X, Y, Z, or X, Y, Z, Z time. Um, this is mostly of interest for formats such as NetCDF, HDF4, HDF5, or, or GRIB. Uh, that are naturally multidimensional. Uh, support for this new API has also been added to the in-memory and the VRT drivers. So with a VRT driver, you can create a virtual uh, multidimensional array from uh, different sources that can be themselves multidimensional or just classic 2D files such as Duotif. There are two new command line utilities, GDAL MDIM info to inspect uh, the content and GDAL MDIM translate to, to convert or subset uh, between formats. And in uh, the future GDAL 3.4 version, we will also have a new driver uh, for there. I will speak about that a bit later. Uh, other improvements, so we have new drivers uh, like the EXRY, one for high dynamic range images. Uh, we have one for GeoID models and another one for the proprietary format by Regal. I'd like to draw attention on the flat geobuff uh, vector driver. Uh, which handles reading and writing a uh, new format, which is optimized in particular for cloud access. It uses Hilbert R trees uh, to enable fast bounding box uh, spatial filtering, and it also be uh, mentioned in the talk I mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, and MapML is um, a new candidate specification for W3C. Um, to have a standard inclusion of maps in hypertext documents. So this driver uh, handles uh, the geometry part of the specification. GDAL warp has been improved uh, to be able to directly create the output in formats like PNG or JPEG that naturally don't support random writing, which was a condition previously. And we have also GDAL view shade, which is a new to utility to compute uh, view shade or intervisibility. So here you, are, you have an example uh, of that. Uh, it's uh, an observer that is set on the Montmartre Sacré-Cœur Basilica in Paris, and it uses the default settings of the utility. So in green, you can see what the observer can see, and in red, what is uh, masked. Uh, you can tune the observer position in eight, uh, the observee is eight, and you can also tune the curvature coefficient, uh, which takes into account uh, uh, atmospheric uh, refraction, and so you, you might have to tune it depending on the wavelengths, uh, considered if it's invisible or radio. It is also now possible to uh, write read-only vector drivers in Python. Um, this can be used mostly for quick prototyping or conversion of custom or occasional file formats. We, we have a, a few, few examples, uh, for example, using a, a CTJSON specification. Uh, the OAPI driver, which uh, stands for OGC API feature, has been updated to, uh, to the 1.0 core specification. Uh, the Geotiff driver uh, has been uh, improved to, to fix a long-standing performance issue when one created internal overviews on large files. Uh, it uh, also has been updated to support the OGC Geotiff 1.1 specification. Um, for people who complain about Chefi being a multi multi-file uh, and, and the issue that it causes. So the shape file driver has been has been updated to to be able to read, to create and update uh, zip, zipped shape files. So it works, of course, uh, you can experience some uh, slowness because there there is compression involved. And for people liking NetCDF, we also now have uh, read and write support for the geometry part of the CF convention. Uh, 
Um, GDAR 3.2 has received a new driver to support the not yet finalized uh, OGC API uh, for tiles, map, and coverages. Uh, it was based on the state of the specification and end of last year, and so it might require some adjustment as they advance towards their finalization. Um, we have also a driver for um, the, S the catch format that is used by S3 ArcGIS. Um, we have a driver to read HEIF and HEEC files. Um, and Dutch people will be happy to learn that we have no driver to, to read the cadastral uh, vector format uh, that is uh, used in the Netherlands. And a new utility, GDAL Create, uh, has been uh, added. So it's a simple utility where you can just initialize the blank raster file from uh, its size, uh, its extent, and uh, uh, the value to, to burn into it. Other improvements. Uh, so we have no multi-threaded overview computation. We have... Uh, almost uh, speed up by a factor of two uh, for the deflate compression, the compression and decompression side. Uh, this requires a quite recent libdiff built against the libdeflate open source project. The cog driver can now generate tiles that are aligned with a well-known tiling scheme, uh, such as a Google Mercator one. Um, so one can use a cog file for example, as a caching backend for a tile server, um, where each tile of the tiling scheme will correspond to a geotiff tile. The open file geodat geodatabase driver has, has received a, a really welcome uh, announcement with a support for reading uh, spatial indexes. So now it's really competitive to its uh, proprietary equivalent uh, for all reading operations. Uh, if you use bathymetric uh, data sets or astronomical data, uh, you'll benefit from uh, improvements in the, in the bags and fits drivers. Um, the NITF driver has also been uh, improved to decode the specific metadata segment that are used in a new profile for multispectral and uh, hyperspectral datasets. The vector feature model has been extended to support unique constraint and alias properties, um, which are used in a number of, uh, of formats. And uh, people still relying on the old way of importing the, the Python bindings will uh, have to upgrade to the, to the new to the new way, which is actually 10 years old. So <laughs> you have no, no excuse for not having updated yet. Uh, in GDAL 3.3, we added uh, the STACTA driver, uh, which stands for Spatial Temporal Asset Catalog Tiled Assets. Um, this is uh, an extension of the, of the stack uh, specification. Um, there are several talks in, in the conference about stack, so uh, I would let watch them to, to, give, to get more details about stack. So this particular driver is a, is a kind of WMTS uh, in stack formalism. Um, and you can use uh, quite large uh, meta tiles, not just simple PNG or small JPEG files. So this can, this can be very convenient to have the, both the advantage of cog and tiling. We have a new virtual file system for the Azure Data Lake uh, Storage Gen 2 um, um, file system. We have also, uh, you can also now store uh, your um, GDAL configuration file in a resource file, which will be loaded uh, when uh, GDAL initialized. Uh, we have enumerated and constraint and glob field uh, domain support uh, for uh, the file geodatabase drivers and geo, geo package. And the Python utilities are now available in the GDAL utils uh, Python, Python package, and they, they can be used as uh, a Python callable uh, functions. Um, 
we have also deprecated and removed a few things. Uh, first, Python 2 support uh, was dropped uh, in favor of Python 3.6 uh, and above. And a few quite esoteric drivers have been completely moved away from the main repository to uh, an auxiliary one, where they can be built as plugins if you really need them. And we have also marked a number of uh, drivers for as deprecated and for removal in uh, GDAL 3.5, unless we hear for solid reasons to, to keep them. All of this is done uh, in an effort to limit the continued growth of the code base and to be able to, to add new code for topics of more current interest. And to finish on the feature side of things, uh, a small uh, preview of what will be in, uh, in GDAL 3.4, uh, which will be released uh, in this November. So we will have a new uh, driver, Stack IT, which stands for Stack Items, which use uh, the projection extension specification. And so we can build a virtual mosaic uh, for each image, uh, which has a, uh, published information regarding its projection and extent. Um, and as I mentioned before, we will have also a new driver for ZAR, uh, which will use a V2 specification, which is the one widely used, and uh, also for the ZAR V3 experimental uh, specification. It supports both the classic 2D GDAL NPI and also the, the multidimensional one. And it, uh, it will be optimized for multi-threaded uh, decoding. Now, going on more organizational topics, uh, there's a big news item uh, that you have probably heard about. So to make it short, we have set up a sponsorship program to help funding maintenance activities. And maintenance here is to be understood in, in a broad term uh, and encompasses all activities that are uh, of general interest for the project, but are typically hard or impossible to fund through usual funding sources. As you may guess, GDAL is a large uh, code base, about 1.5 million lines of code. We do have a regular flow of contribution by many people, um, but this is handled by a relatively small pool of people that have a role of maintainer, which causes uh, a sustainability problem. Uh, and uh, GDAL is, uh, is really used by a number of other geospatial software, uh, open source or proprietary. We have a page that lists more than, than 100 of them. So it's really a core foundation of, of geospatial technology and its well-being is quite critical. So we have approached NumFocus, uh, which is a US charity to be our fiscal host. So NumFocus, uh, hosts a number of well-known projects such as NumPy, Pandas, SciPy, Condaforge, XRA, Dask, uh, and many others. And uh, for other purposes, uh, GDAL will, uh, will remain the West Geo, West Geo project. So this initiative was really successful as we, we've managed to, to raise about $300,000 Year, and uh, many of the of the donors uh, have done pledges for for several years. So this will will help secure funding for several regular co maintainers and uh, and increase the, the bus factor of the project. So currently we have two part time co maintainers, myself and Niall Dawson. We will be able to address activities such as uh, bug uh, fixing and triaging, a timely review of pull, requ of pull requests, maintaining the continuous integration setups, uh, and making the, the needed change to adopt uh, for f updates in upstream dependency, address security fixes, and, and do release management. Uh, one, uh, one topic that we will probably start soon uh, uh, thanks to, to this project, is the addition of a CMake-based build system that will ultimately replace uh, existing Unix and Windows build system. Um, 
and another good news is that uh, with uh, the sponsorship program, we'll be able to to also sponsor uh, enhancements in uh, the upstream projects like Proj, LibDOT, FlipTIF, uh, that are core foundations for for GDAL. Uh, so I've, I've put at the bottom of the slide uh, the links to uh, the two documents that uh, explain uh, the, the government rules uh, of the sponsorship program. So if we if we have a look at our sponsors, you, you can see that we've managed to attract interest from uh, three major cloud providers, two major satellite imagery providers, and a number of big and small and medium enterprise in the in the cheese industry. So uh, many thanks to, to them for, for their support. And I also would particularly like to thank Howard Butler, Chris Hans, and Paul Ramsey, who have helped a lot setting up this initiative uh, together with the support of the GDAL Project Steering Committee. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer any question you may have. Great. Thank you, Evan. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them forth in the uh, in the chat, and we'll be sure to uh, relay them. Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll start off with a question. Um, how can how can so it's exciting to hear about the sponsorship uh, news and the sponsorship program. How can new uh, how can new sponsors approach the project? Um, so on the gdal.org website, we have a, a new page uh, that is dedicated uh, to, to sponsorship, and uh, we uh, we have an email where, um, where people interested in sponsor sponsoring can can contact us, and uh, we will um, make them in relationship with uh, the staff at NumFocus that will uh, take part of the of the details of setting up the sponsorship. That's great. Um, and in, ter in terms of influence, what uh, sort of the value proposition, what kind of influence would the sponsors have on the project as a result of their, uh, as a result of their contributions? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so uh, we, we, we have, so the, the, the sponsor, the, what they give to the project is intended to be a non-directed way. That is, um, the GDAL project steering committee will remain responsible for deciding what will be done. Um, however, we have uh, put in place uh, uh, a structure where the sponsor will be able to explain their, about their use of GDAL, their ideas, and so we will take that as input for any decision on the on the project we, we may have so basically the the governments the governance of, of the project will remain quite similar as, as it is today um, we will we'll continue to receive input uh, and contribution for the, the whole community community and uh, sponsors will will be able to to give also their their input and will try to mix that as best as we can. Cool. Just looking to see if we have any questions from the audience. Um, one more question uh, on my side, at least. Uh, you mentioned CMake, which is encouraging. Is there a timeline on on when when this uh, will land in, uh, in master? Uh, <laughs> so first, we, we will have to, to, to put together uh, request for comment document uh, for for approval and, and comment by by the the community. So the, the timeline I've in mind is a first capability in GDAL 3.5, so in May next year. So which will be mostly for developers, so they can start testing, but probably not ready yet for production. And GDAL 3.6, it should be really close to to be production ready, and we will probably officially deprecate the existing file system, um, build system. And GDAL 3.7 will only keep CMX. So that's my current idea of how it it will go. So yeah. Okay. 
a few more questions now. Um, for the cog driver, uh, user wants to, wants to do cubic overviews on two bands, but nearest on the third band. Using regenerate overviews works, but starts emitting a warning about optimized layout broken. Is there any way to do this cleanly? It's probably mm. a detailed question, but I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let, let me look at the question. It's it, it's in the. Yeah. Oops, sorry, I must. Yeah. Um, not really, because uh, if you go regenerate overviews, it will indeed break uh, the optimized layout of the file. So I don't really have a, an easy solution for that. It's not super typical. Um, may, maybe the solution would be to to create a regular um, Joty file using those different um, um, resampling methods, and then use uh, the option in the cog driver to use the existing overviews uh, to uh, to avoid them to to be recomputed. That should work, I think. <laughs> Another question. Uh, how do you decide who will benefit from the sponsorship program? Um, so for now, it has been an invitation from uh, the GDAL PSC. Uh, we will see how, how it works. I mean, it's it's really new. So, but probably at some points we will uh, uh, call for proposal to to the community. If people have ideas that. They, they want to, to be funded, uh, we'll probably have such a mechanism. Great. Um, another question on the uh, COG driver in relationship to uh, GeoTIFF. What are your thoughts on when we should use plain old GeoTIFF as opposed to COG? Um, COG is, is mostly plain old GeoTIFF, so there is no real disadvantage in, in using COG file. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it'll work just the same, okay. Yeah, the um, COG just makes sure that some things are put in the right place in the file to uh, for it to, to be in the most optimal layout for cloud usage, but there is no real drawback in using a Cog file in a non cloud context. Another question when, uh, when do you see Python 3 support being uh, potentially dropped? Python 3.6? 3.6. Um, I don't know. For, there is, I don't think there is any pressing reason for now to, to drop it. Um, we, we haven't thought about that yet. OK. Uh, another question. Does the line of sight prediction take into account any, any additional atmospheric refractivity information aside from just the wavelength of observation? Ooh, uh, I'm not sure I can answer the question. Uh, uh, I, I was not the, the author of this utility. It was, uh, it was written by. Uh, Thomas Segeras. Um, I, I just know there is this curvature coefficient that uh, that you can put as input to to the utility. Okay, great. I think that's all of the questions. Um, Evan, I'd like to thank you for uh, for always an interesting presentation, and I'm glad to see the exciting news and, and developments in GDAL. And like to thank you very much for uh, for joining us here, and have a good rest of the week. Thanks. Great. Good night.